please give a first time ShmooCon speaker welcome to Ray. Hi, so today I'm gonna to be talking about uh, OSIN for human rights and victim support. Uh, since we are in DC and it is an election year, uh, let's talk about voting to start. Um, every four years, uh, since I can remember, we've heard slogans like, rock the vote, every vote counts, um, pushing us to go out and do our civic duty, and many of us do. But what if something like voting uh, could cost you any, everything, maybe even your life? What if the publicly available information published by local and state policy uh, drew a map straight to your front door? So my name is Ray Baker, and I am an OSIN analyst, uh, both professionally and as a volunteer for Operation Safe Escape. Uh, we help keep domestic violence victims hidden from their abusers. And I'm gonna tell you a story today about a woman named Anna and how public data changed her life. So Anna, like many other women and men, uh, has been living with an abuser for years and she's finally had enough. So she's, she's fleeing, she takes her child, she flees to a shelter uh, with nothing but her car, her phone, and a few items of clothes. Um, her, her ex is blowing up her phone, making threats um, that are getting increasingly violent. Um, the unique thing about her ex is he is um, particularly tech savvy, so he's highly determined to cause problems for her. Um, he thinks that if he can target her employment, he can maintain control over her. So the first thing he does is locate her employer's LinkedIn page and website. And with this, he is able to go to the website hunter.io, which allows you to uh, find, the, oops, find the naming conventions for uh, a company's domain. So. Uh, in this instance, it's uh, first initial dot last name at fakecompany.com. So with that, even though Anna knew the perils of using LinkedIn, um, sh and she set her account to private, uh, her abuser was still able to find out who her coworkers were by going to the company page. So using the first initial last name uh, convention that he figured out in uh, hunter.io, he's able to guess um, the emails for the company for all the important people like the CEO, CMO, CFO, uh, people she's mentioned that are important. And he takes this and he creates an email list. And with that email list, he can now send private pictures that she sent him throughout their relationship and forwards them to her entire company. Um, he also sends them to uh, post them in revenge porn message boards. So uh, next, he tries to target her for sole custody of their child. So many abusers try and do this to tie their partners up in the legal system because uh, it's another way to maintain control. So using uh, easily available downloadable apps from the App Store uh, that are free, he's able to craft fake text messages coming from her in a conversation. Um, he dates them and they're discussing buying drugs, doing them in front of her child, and he prints them out and gives them to the police. So after hundreds of emails are sent to her job, she gets fired. They don't really have a policy for this, so uh, they have to let her go. Um, her abuser calls and tells her that he knows where she is. Uh, he has details of her location and to watch her back because uh, he's gonna tell the police about her addiction. So now she's feeling tracked. She doesn't know how, she doesn't know much about tech, but she knows that he's able to figure out where she is, um, but she doesn't know how. She's afraid he's gonna show up at her kid's school and take them out of school and run away with them. Uh, what she doesn't know is that before she left, he anticipated this, and he uh, set up text forwarding on her phone. So he's been intercepting her iMessages and her emails. So at this point, she does what most people do, and she contacts the police and tells them everything. And they tell her their hands are tied, 
um, which happens sadly often. They don't have much evidence to go on. Uh, she, so she tries to file a restraining order, um, but it's denied because they, again, don't have any evidence that there's a serious threat. So she's left, again, with no recourse. So she takes it in her own hands and she starts following him on social media, tracking him to see if she can figure out what his next steps are. And she notices he's posting vague messages like, you know, checkmate, uh, you can't hide forever, but she knows they're for her. Um, her abuser used the text forwarding that he set up previously to thwart two-factor authentication on her accounts and reset all her accounts. So she can't get into them, I'd like her email um, and other important things. Uh, another thing that he knows is from living with them, he knows their patterns. So he knows that every Friday she orders pizza with her kid and their family. So she, he, she knows, he knows that when she posts on Twitter, the little pizza icon, I know not many people do that, but she does, uh, to order pizza from Domino's, that the family is together. So now they're in the same location and he's able to log into her Domino's app using a shared password that they know and check out the last delivery address and now he knows where she lives. So fearing for her life, she flees again, and she's living with a friend. So she got a new phone number, she changed the way she looks, um, she started searching for jobs, she's feeling a little bit safer now. And with her free time, she's been volunteering for a national domestic violence coalition because she needs to do something for herself. So she's educating people on why voting in the upcoming ele election can help with domestic violence reform. She might feel safe, but her ex is actively trying to find her. He created a fake LinkedIn account using uh, an image from this person does not exist.com, which uses AI to create a fake person uh, that wouldn't trace back to him. So he creates a smiling woman and he sends one of Anna's friends a message on LinkedIn that says, you know, I am an HR rep. I know she's really looking for a job. We have the perfect job for her, but we don't know her phone number. It's changed. Do you have her phone number? Of course, her friend, trying to be helpful, gives the phone number. So using this phone number, uh, he is able to download a free spoofing app. And these spoofing apps have all sorts of uh, things that they can do, like change your voice to be female, um, be in a crowd, they're not always good, but, so he uses that, and he calls and pretends that he's her bank, and says, I need your address and your phone number for our federal um, records, so we need you to update that. So she, not knowing it's him, gives her address, and now she needs to move again. So she feels really trapped now, um, no matter what she does, he's like one step ahead and she, she doesn't know what to do. The shelters don't know what to do because they're not trained and law enforcement isn't always trained in uh, tech situations like this. But one of the shelters that she stayed in briefly mentioned Operation Safe Escape. So she contacts them through their website and they listen, they put her in an encrypted room where they talk about her issues, they figure out that she is she needs a new phone, reset her passwords, they pair her with a security team, and they start to shift power back to her, which is really important. Another thing uh, they do is they generate an OSINT report. So this would assess her digital and physical vulnerabilities, and they're open to chat with her uh, whenever she needs to, uh, sometimes on their own phones, um, through an encrypted channel that, that they set up and they determined that her abuser has been tracking her through her apps. So she has started to regain some control through working with Operation Safe Escape, and um, she now uses a new phone that's encrypted. She deleted all her social media accounts, and she's warned her friends and family not to give away any of her information. She's also created a safe word for her child's school so that nobody can check her out but her. 
Um, Operation Safe Escape also works with partners like the Badass Army, and in this case, they helped to get her nudes removed from the internet. So it's now November in 2020, and she finally feels a bit of safety after working with, with Operation Safe Escape and the Badass Army, and um, she feels in control. So the threatening messages have stopped, and she's now working under the table at a restaurant. Um, she's also been receiving additional support through her volunteer organization, and she's really excited to vote in the election uh, to help pass some of the bills that she's been fighting for. But what she doesn't know, but her abuser does, is that because of state sunshine laws, her name, address, voting history, and affiliation is now publicly available online, and her abuser can track her down. Uh, the amount of info varies by state, but it's generally pretty revealing. So although she is fictional, uh, many of the things in her story are not. They're pulled straight from actual things that we've dealt with at Operation Safe Escape. Uh, her abuser was not some high-tech super spy. He was just some guy who found some stuff online and used them to his advantage. So what made the difference in Anna's safety was the support of security professionals just like you. So how can you help? Uh, there are tons of ways you can help. These are just a few of them um, that I wanted to highlight. Uh, but I implore you to go seek out more. The, this is certainly not an exhaustive list. Uh, Trace Labs, they work with missing people. They're actually doing a capture the flag tonight, um, but it's full, sorry. Um, Innocent Lives Foundation, I'm sure you've heard of them. They work uh, with child exploitation cases. Uh, Bellingcat.com, they're like OSINT journalists. They do a lot of human rights stuff. Europol, they do trace an object. So they do child exploitation images and they cut out everything but like a logo on a shirt and they ask the public to track it down. Safe Escape, Operation Safe Escape, we do um, everything from training of uh, staff and law enforcement, um, OSINT, digital forensics, um, anything that you would want to volunteer for, I'm sure we have something. And the Badass Army, they, they work with victims of image abuse. And they, they do policy for each state. So I wanted to leave you today with a, an old story that you probably have heard, but it resonated with me while I was making this. Um, so one day a man is walking along the beach and it's littered with starfish, like 10,000 starfish, and he sees a boy who's chucking one of them back, one by one, and he says, what are you doing? How, how is this going to help? And he picks one up and throws it back in and said, I helped that one. So remember, you might, it might seem like you can't help, but even if you help one person, it makes a difference. So that is my presentation. And if you want to get a hold of me, uh, you can contact me on Twitter. That's probably the easiest way. Or my safe escape email. Thank you. I don't know what time I ended. <laughs> yeah, any questions? No? Nope. All right. Thank you.